Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at some CXC past paper questions, both from July, May, June, and from January, from 2021 going back. And we're going to focus specifically on functions. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into the questions. All right. Now the first one says, and this is from July 2021, the most recent paper. Given that f of x is equal to one third x plus four, and g of x is equal to 3x all over x plus 1. The first thing they want us to find is the value of f of 9. So I'm going to be looking specifically at the f function. Now remember that x is your domain. So what they're asking is, what is going to happen when that x value becomes 9 in the f function? So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say f of 9 would mean that I'm replacing my x value inside of the function with 9. So I'm going to have one third. Since I'm replacing X, I'm gonna put it in a bracket, put the nine in a bracket, I'm gonna put by the plus four. The only thing that gets replaced is your X value. Now, when I go one third times nine, it's the same thing as saying one third times nine over one, if you want to look at it that way, three into three, one, three into nine, three. So what I end up with is three plus four, which is gonna give me seven, all right? I uh, hope that that is straightforward. All right, let me take this down a bit now. It says, calculate the value of f of g of minus three. Now, what is actually happening is that inside of my f function, the x value has been replaced by g of minus three. So what do I need to do? I need to take this in steps. I'm gonna find g of minus three, and the answer I get, I'm gonna plug it in f. And that will give me f of g of minus 3. So let us start out with g of minus 3. All right, so what we need to do is that we actually need to go back up to see what the g function was. The g function was 3x plus 1 over 2. All right, so g of x is equal to 3x, 3x over x plus 1. All right, good. So I'm going to replace in the x value by minus 3. So it's going to be 3 open bracket minus 3 over minus three plus one. Remember it was X plus one and the X value has been replaced by minus three in both cases. All right, what happens here is that I'm gonna get negative nine over negative three plus one is negative two. And of course you divide a negative by a positive, it becomes a positive nine over two. We keep our answer as a fraction. Now, G of minus three is nine over two. So what I need to find is f of nine over two, since the g of minus three, all that would be is nine over two. So in other words, I'm gonna go back up and look at the f function, and I'm gonna replace x in the f function with nine over two. Bear in mind the f of x function was one third x plus four. So this is now gonna become one third, open bracket, nine over two plus four. All right, let's see what happens. 3 into 3, 1, 3 into 9 goes 3 times. So I have 3 over 2 plus 4. Of course, things like this can always go inside of your calculator. All right. Or I can simply work it out. Um, you could put the 4 over 1. Your LCM is 2. 2 into 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 into 2 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. This becomes. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 over 2. So I now need to write my final statement since I broke it up in different parts. So therefore, f of g of minus 3 is equal to 11 over 2. What are you learning from this question? That you find the inside part first, the g of minus 3, because that is now the domain of the f function. Whatever you get for g of minus 3, which is 9 over 2 in this case, I simply plug it inside of the f function. So I say f of 9 over 2. At the end of the question now, I can now write a concluding statement based on what I was asked for, all right? So not too tough there on that. All right, part three, determine the value of x for which g of x is equal to five over two. Now let's go back up and find g of x. g of x is three x plus, three x over x plus one. All right, so let's lay this out so it can make sense to us. We're gonna have g of x is equal to five over two. Now, I don't want anyone replacing x with 5 over 2 because it didn't say g of 5 over 2. It says the entire function 
is equal to five over two. The function g of x is three x over x plus one. And this function is now equal to five over two. That's the concept that we want you guys to understand this in. Now, what do I do? I need to find x. Now, here's a technique we can use. Whenever we're dealing with fractions, we don't want LCMs that create problem in solving equations. So we could simply use a cross multiplication here to easily eliminate that. So I'm gonna have three x times two is equal to five times x plus one. We use a bracket because we have more than one thing and so we don't want any wrong interpretation here. This is six x equal five x plus five. We need the like terms on one side. So I'm gonna care about the five x, which is gonna change sign. So it's six x minus five x equal to five. All right, and of course, you know why it changes sign because I would have to subtract it from both sides. Now, x is simply equal to five, and I can say, therefore, the value of x, so which g of x is equal to five over two, is five. All right, you have a nice concluding statement there. So that was June, May, June 2021. Now we are on to January 2021. All right, now. We need to know different things. So for example, this is what you refer to as a mapping diagram. Over here, you have your domain. Over here, you have your codomain. And more specifically, this is the range. Now, what's the difference between the codomain and the range? The codomain, well, the range is really a subset of the codomain, all right? The range is what is mapped onto. And since everything is mapped onto, the codomain is actually equal to the range in this case because you have a three one minus one and everything is mapped on two. All right, so the diagram shows a function. So the function that maps x onto f of x is three minus two x. In other words, these are my x values. I input them into this function and these are my output values. All right, other things you can observe is that this is really a one to one function. All right, so it says a equal. Okay, a is the output, right? Now, based on the arrow, I input minus one to get A. So I'm gonna go to the function, all right? I'm gonna input minus one in the place of X as it represents the X value, minus one. And the output is actually equal to A based on the arrow. So this becomes three, negative two times negative one is positive two equal A. So A is equal to five. So we know that this is five right here. All right, let's go down some more. So what does they want from us? Determine in its simplest form, the expression for the inverse function, f inverse of x. Now, simply put, the inverse takes you back from the range to your domain. So in other words, you want to reverse this function. Now, there's a process that we lay out for finding the inverse that is really difficult to mess up, right? So we start by saying that f of x is equal to three minus two x. To make it easier, we normally call it y. So we say let y equal three minus two x. Now, of course, because we're going in reverse, normally, if you want the inverse, you really, really have transpose of x because you're going from your codomain now back to your domain, right? But to make this easier for you, we simply, so we switch the x and the y variables. So we switch x and y, all right? Now, when we switch x and y, what happens is that where you have y, you're gonna have x, and where you have x, you're gonna have y, x equal three minus two y. And then we transpose for y, make y the subject. Now this one is not so difficult because it's a simple linear equation. We have three minus two y, we're gonna get rid of the three first. So I'm gonna have x minus three, the three comes over as a minus, equal negative two y, do not forget the signs. You want y by itself, the negative two is multiplying it. So you divide both sides by a negative two, all right? So y equal to x minus three upon negative two. So therefore, f inverse of x is equal to x minus three upon negative two. And you'd have been complete there. All right. Part B, the composite function f square, well, f square of x. Hmm. Now, what does that mean? Now, 
this doesn't mean that you should square the function. If you wanted to square the function, write f of x all squared. So we don't want you to mix that up. What f squared of x means is really f of f of x. So you're putting f of x into itself in the place of x. All right, so, so to make this easier, what we simply do is that we rewrite the function three minus two, where you see the x, you put a bracket, because that's the only thing that is replaced, the domain value, which is x. Now, what goes inside of this bracket? f of x, because we want f of f of x. Now, f of x, of course, is three minus two x. So all I have to do here now is simply expand this. So this becomes three, you expand. Remember, you do multiplication first. You can't say three minus two give you one. No, because you have to expand the bracket first. So that's negative six plus four X. Three minus six is negative three plus four X. All right, you normally go therefore F squared of X equal. So the key thing here to remember is that F squared of X means F of F of X. It doesn't mean this, all right? It's not equal to that. Very important that you understand that. Let's take this down to part three and see what it asks. And of course, these are questions you should be able to run through quickly. Now state the value of f of f inverse of minus two. Now when I find, all right, let's go up to the function now. This is something we can use the domain to do. Remember now, what technically speaking, what we are doing is that we are putting the inverse, f inverse of minus two into two. But let's go back and look at the domain function to understand what is happening. When you find the inverse of a function, what that function does is that it takes you from the range or from the codomain back to your domain. All right? So if I had minus two over here, in this case, I would have to look for minus two here and to find f inverse of minus two, I would look at the domain value because it's reversing the process. Notice if arrows go from the domain to the codomain, the, the inverse goes in reverse. So I would have to find minus two over here and go back to that side. Good. Now, f inverse of minus two. All right, so let's, let's create something here to make you understand better. So you'd have minus two here. And let's say you have p here. f inverse of minus two. The inverse suggests that you go from your codomain back to your domain, all right? So we actually would say F inverse of minus two is equal to P. But the question is F of F inverse of minus two. We know F inverse of minus two to be P. So inside of the function, I can replace all of that with P and just simply say F of P. Now F of P would mean that you're going from your domain, which is P, back to your codomain or your range, which is minus two. So in other words, if you put the inverse function into the original function, f of f inverse of x in general is just gonna be x. So simply put, when I go down to this question down here, f of f inverse of minus two, all this will give me is simply minus two. Okay, guys, now we move on to January 2020. And it says the function f is defined as f of x equal to x plus seven all over five. Find the values of f of four plus f of minus four. Now, all we have to do, don't think of this as being complicated, do it piece by piece. Let's go with f of four first. So wherever we have x, we're gonna be putting four in the function. So this will be two, use your bracket, times four plus seven all over five. No, two times four is eight, and eight plus seven would give me 15 over five. So that's gonna give me three. So we're done with f of four. Now we can find f of negative four, same concept. Two times negative four plus seven all over five. That's negative eight plus seven over five. And of course that's negative, one over five. So this implies that f of four plus f of minus four would be equal to three plus negative one over five. And you know, when we have plus negative one is really three minus one over five, all right? Now, 
In this case, three minus one over five, there are different ways you can look at it. Okay, well, five times three, 15 minus one, 15 minus one is 14, so that's 14 over five. So therefore, f of four plus f of negative four is 14 over five. Now it is up to you whether or not you might want to use a calculator. All right, if you think you're gonna make an algebraic error, simply use a calculator and put that in. All right, calculate the value of x for which f of x is equal to nine. Once again, a similar concept we apply. So f of x is equal to nine. So you're gonna go for f of x, which is two x plus seven over five. So I'm gonna have two x plus seven over five. And we're gonna equate that to nine. All right, now you know exactly what we need to do. We need to find x. So we're gonna to have to get rid of the fractions. So we can start by multiplying both sides by five. All right, this is gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna have two x plus seven equal 45. We want x by itself, so I'm gonna have two x equal 45 minus seven. Now 45 minus seven would give me 38. So two x is equal to 38. I will divide both sides by two. So x would be equal to 19. And of course, as I said before, you can write your statement, right? All right. Hence or otherwise determine the value of f inverse of nine. Now, remember what the function does, all right? When you find f, the value of x that gives you nine, you're finding the domain value, the x value. This is what we're doing here. But now when I want to find f inverse of nine, I'm going in reverse. So f inverse of nine really means what x value did I put in the function to get nine in the first place? That x value would have been 19 because you're now going from your domain back to your codomain. You're going from your codomain, sorry, back to your domain. So technically speaking, when they're asking me for f inverse of nine, it really means what value of x did I put in the function in the first place to get nine? So we found it, it's 19, because we find out that f of 19 is equal to nine. So in the inverse sense, if I'm going from my range now back to my domain, I'm simply gonna be asking myself, what did I plug in the function to get nine? I would have plugged in 19. So f inverse of nine is simply equal to 19. All right, you could have, done it a long way, which would have been a waste of time, which is to inverse the function and then put in nine. But we don't want to do that because we want to understand the thing conceptually. All right? Now, we end up, we are at May 2019. All right? And it says f of x is equal to nine over two x plus one. And g of x is equal to x minus three. Now state the value of x such that f, so that, x state a value of x that cannot be in the domain for f. All right, we already know what the problem is. Division by zero is not is undefined. So whenever the denominator is equal to zero, then of course we have an undefined value, but we want a value of x that makes that happen. So we're gonna have to say two x plus one, let two x plus one equal zero. Two x would be equal to negative one, we divide both sides by two, x equal to negative a half. So simply put, the value of x, and you write the statement, the value of x that cannot be in the domain is negative a half. That is the value that would give all the problem. We have f of g of x, and that simply means that we put g of x in the function f in the place of x. So the g function goes into the f function in the place of x. So what do I do? I write the f function, and wherever I have X, I'm gonna put a bracket there because in that bracket, the G function shall go. So it's gonna be nine over, you put everything apart from the X open bracket plus one. What goes in the bracket? My G of X function, which is X minus three. Okay, pretty much all I have to do here now is to tidy up this. So technically this is gonna become nine over, 2x minus 6 plus 1, which is 9 over 2x minus 5. And then I'm actually done there. All right, we have f inverse of x. 
So we're gonna go back for f of x. f of x is nine over two x plus one. So let's start from there. f of x equal to nine over two x plus one. All right, we normally equate it to y to make it easier. y equal nine over two x plus one. And then of course, you know, we switch it. So we switch x and y. So x is equal to nine over two y plus one. And then once we have switched it, we're now gonna find the y value. Now, the y value in this case would be representing the inverse function. And you know, the inverse goes from the range back to the domain. That's what we're trying to find, that function. Now, because this is a fraction, to make it easier, I can simply put this over one. So we have two fractions on both sides, which means we could simply use a cross multiplication technique. Remember, we're trying to find y. All right. So I'm gonna have x open bracket to y plus one equal to nine times one. We expand, so two xy plus x equal to nine. Now we want y by itself. So it's treated like a regular transposition equation. I can start by carrying over the x, right? So two xy is equal to nine minus x. Since we want y and the two x is multiplying the y, we divide both sides by two x. So y is equal to nine minus x over two x. So therefore, f inverse of x is equal to nine minus x over two x. And that's my inverse function. All right. We can now move down to January 2019. Okay, we now move to January 2019. It says the function h of x is equal to 2x plus 3 all over 5 minus x. Determine the value of x, or the function is undefined. And once again, the function is normally undefined when the denominator is equal to 0, as we know that division by 0 is not a logical thing, right? It's undefined. So we're going to say let 5 minus x equal to 0. If I carry over the x, I have 5 equal x. That's easier seeing that by moving into the opposite side, I would end up with a positive. Therefore, x equal 5. And if you want, you write a statement, right? Now, the next one is h inverse of x. I will do the normal semantics way, right? So we let y equal to, well, h of x, first of all, is 2x plus 3 over 5 minus x. So we're going to say let y equal 2x plus 3 over the make sure we have the right function. Let's go back up a bit. So that's 2x plus 3 over 5 minus x. All right, then you know we interchange x and y. So we have x equal 2y plus 3. Remember, all the x's get replaced by y or 5 minus y. All right, what do I do next? Since these are fractions, we can always put that over one. So we can actually cross multiply. I'm gonna have X times five minus Y equal one times two Y plus three to get rid of the denominator scenario. So now if we expand the bracket, we have five X minus XY equal two Y plus three. Remember our job is to simply find Y. So I need to have all the Y's on one side. So I can go minus x, y, bring over the two y, so it becomes a minus two y equal three, which is positive over there. Care about the five x, it becomes a minus five x. So this rearrangement can be, is, can be done quite quickly. Now we have two different, we have two unlike terms that have y in there. So what we can do is simply factor out the y so we can have the y by itself. So that's minus six minus two. And this is equal to three minus five x. All right, what do I do? I need y by itself, the entire bracket is multiplying y. So I divide both sides by it. So I'm gonna divide both sides by minus x minus two, minus x minus two, all right? So y is equal to three minus five x over minus x minus two. So therefore, h inverse of x is equal to three minus five x over minus x minus two. That is your final answer. Now we're at June 2018.
So it says the function f with domain one, two, three is given by. So these are the input values. These are the values that we can input. And you have the function, the value of f of one. All right, so this is gonna imply that I'm gonna be replacing the x with the one in the function, minus three. So that's equal to a half minus three. Half times one is a half. So we have a half minus three, which is negative five over two. All right, straightforward. Okay. So we go down now and say, find the value of x for which f of x is equal to minus two. Same concept. We simply take the function, which is a half x minus three, and we equate it to minus two. And we treat it just like how we treat any regular equations, right? What do we get rid of first? Naturally, we're gonna to need to get rid of the minus three. So we're gonna have a half x is equal to minus two plus three. You have a half, right? We can start by getting rid of the denominator, which is two. So we're gonna multiply both sides by two. So two times a half x is equal to two times, of course, negative two plus three is one. So x is equal to two. It does make sense getting x equal to because two is a part of your domain. Okay. An added pair of our functions is expressed in the form a, b. Using your answer in part a, one, and two, this is the added pair for the function, a, one, and a, two. So I want to list the added pair. So I know that one produce negative five over two. So that's gonna be my first pair. When I put in one, I get negative five over two. For this case, no, don't get this confused, you know. Negative two in this case is the output. So that's a, the Y value, negative two, that's a B value. So we found the value that we plugged in to be two, all right? I also would have a next added pair. That is when I plug three in there, all right? See it here? So the, the domain values are one, two, and three. So I'm gonna have to find F of three, which is gonna be a half times three minus three. All right, half times three is really three over two minus three. So this is actually gonna give me negative three over two. So if I put in three, I get negative three over two. So I'm gonna come down here now and put in that as my next added pair, three, negative three over two. I'll put this inside of our curly brace. And this is our set of added pair. All right, explain why f of x is not equal to five for the function. Now, f of x cannot be equal to five because there's no value inside of our input, which is our domain that will give us five, all right? So you can say, f of x is not equal to five as the domain values do not produce five. In other words, there's no value of x in my domain that would give me five. If I want to simply put it just like that, I could simply say that there is no value in my domain that would produce a value of five, which is my y value. So that's why it can't be equal to five. Right. So now we're at 2018. This is for January, I believe. It says the function f is defined as f of x is equal to one third x minus two. Find f of three plus f of negative three. And you know, we do this step by step. f of three first would be one third times three minus two. Once again, the calculator can do this for you. Or I can simply train the three one. I have one minus two, which is negative one. All right, if you're not confident this way, use a calculator. F of minus three would be one third minus three minus two. All right, this would give me negative one, negative one minus two, negative three, which implies that F of three plus F of minus three would imply minus one plus minus three is minus four. Good there. The value of x, so which f of x is equal to five. Once again, 
you're going to equate f of x to 5. And f of x is 1 third x minus 2. You equate that to 5. And you solve for x just like a regular equation. So you're going to carry over the 2 first. So you're going to be saying that 1 third x is equal to 5 plus 2. So 1 third x is equal to 7. I am dividing by 3 here. So we multiply both sides by 3. That is gone. So 1x, which is just x, is equal to 21. And of course, you can write, once again, you can write your statement. The inverse, f inverse of x. So go back for f of x, 1 third x minus 2. So we're going to say, let y equal 1 third x minus 2. All right, so you switch x and y now x equal one third y minus two. And we solve for y. So we can care about the two first. x plus two equal one third y. We need to get rid of the three so we can multiply both sides by three, right? So we have three x plus six equal to y. So therefore, f inverse of x is equal to three x plus six. And technically right there, I am actually 